have Ukraine and Russia both shown their hand for their plans in the coming year? And is Russia still trying to mitigate the fallout of the missile strike in Donetsk? I'm Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran. It is January 5th, 2023. This is your daily Ukraine update. Let's get right into it. Okay, first, when we look at the tactical map, actually, this assesses that there have been some Russian gains in and around, or not in, but around Bakhmut. Uh, they've assessed that Russian forces have made some advances in this open no man's land. While they're not really able to seize territory, though it does show them as having taken most of Bakhmutsky, um, they are, at least in their assessment, occupying this large no man's land leading up to Krasnohora. And they're also, of course, attempting to encircle Solidar. Uh, this is probably the most significant changes to the front lines we've seen in some time. Uh, it's not clear if this is part of a breakthrough. I suspect that Ukrainian forces uh, understand that these villages are the strong points and forcing the Russians to fight in big open terrain is to their detriment. Uh, we also, of course, can see that um, Pitarodne is also nearly uh, occupied. But again, I think Ukrainian forces understand that these pieces of urban terrain are the real key um, to maintaining a defensive posture around Bakhmut. That said, uh, progress is progress, and it wouldn't be a good thing if you saw uh solidar or cross nahora fall simply because this is a valuable route to if nothing else move resources from bakhmut north uh to ukrainian positions in solidar blahodatne and cross nahora so not good news uh for the bakhmut defenders um you can also see here to the south near kurdyumivka uh they're assessing a small Russian advance uh, just up to this natural barrier, this canal right here. Uh, so, again, it's not uh, bad news for Russian forces. Again, uh, very much a reminder that that, uh, that there, some of them are paid by the square meter advanced uh, simply because now I actually... We'll be curious to see how long Russian forces can actually hold this chunk of territory uh, because it's very, very exposed and there is not a lot of cover. They would have to create their own earthworks and entrenched positions in order to hold them. Uh, the only place that this isn't the case is this half of Batmutsky where they they it looks like it's still contested. But this, if your goal was to take casualties, this is exactly the salient you would try to occupy. Um, they kind of have to if they want to encircle Solidar, but man, this is a vulnerable place to be. Ukrainian forces can hit them from the south, from the north, from the west, and there's just not a lot of cover for them. When we look at the battle map, you can see that this actually assesses uh, that there's been no ground assaults. Uh, I think this is a function of, of the different timings of the maps. Uh, this one updates a bit more recently. So I suspect that there are no ground assaults because Russia is in the consolidation phase. It's made you know gains. I, I, I am reluctant to call them significant, but it's made gains. Uh, taking Yakolivka, right, and large portions of this open terrain here. But you guys can see just how open it is, man. There is nothing here. I would not want to be a Russian soldier outside of Solidar, where uh, Ukrainian forces have stronger defensive positions uh, and urban cover and concealment, whereas you are just out in the open, exposed to drones, artillery, fire, tanks, you name it. But Russia, again, is... <laughs> Not creative, but finding its own sort of heartbeat of operations, which is about now it seems like on a 48-hour cycle of small attacks attempting to break through uh, Ukrainian lines, a period of consolidation, and then an, a period of shelling and more ground attacks. And right now it looks like they are in the shelling phase. 
What's more interesting is what's going on behind the lines for a couple of reasons. First, it's worth noting that, uh, let's see if we can find it here. Um, Ukraine itself uh, has said that <clears throat> Russia's planning a new wave of mobilization in an effort to turn the tide of the war. This is of course, in alignment with what we've been talking about for weeks, that Russia is preparing the information space to launch a general mobilization, including creating what appears to be a uh, entirely fictional uh, soldiers, widows, and and mothers group that wants mobilization, which is insane. Uh, but it's not clear, as we've talked about, that even if you had more troops that you could equip them. The troops they have now aren't being properly equipped. And that itself is a problem, but if you were to double or triple the number of troops on the battlefield, you would compound those logistics issues. Now, when we look at the in uh, Institute for the Study of War, they also have some very interesting uh, revelations. First, of course, is that the Russian mill bloggers uh, are in direct opposition to the Ministry of Defense regarding the reasons that the uh, strike in Makivka, the Ukrainian strike in Makivka that killed a large number of Russian personnel, even the Russians are now assessing it at 89. So it probably is in the hundreds. Um, but what's interesting is that the Russian Ministry of Defense official position is that the troops themselves uh, because they used uh, mobile telephones within range of enemy systems, exposed their position, and resulted in the strike that killed them. Uh, but what's this, of course, one mill blogger points out, is that it's wrong to make enemy mobile, wrong to blame mobile phones uh, for these strikes. Uh, and they said it's not the cell phones or their owners that are to blame, but the negligence of commanders. This is, this is, I think, actually uh, the, the kind of take that you definitely will have if you've served. You understand that, uh, you know, we used to say privates are going to be privates, and they're going to play with their cell phones if they can. They're going to, uh, you know, sit if they can. They're going to lie down if they can. And the question is simply that you you have to create an environment, a level of discipline, and frankly, take away some of those opportunities um, in order to mitigate that risk. But I even argue that there's probably lots of cell phone pings by Russian mobilized forces all over the front lines. Why were this these cell phones in particular um, able to ping? And you can't triangulate a cell phone uh, to the meter, right? They ping off of towers and you get the data from where these numbers are pinging off, off different towers. So, you know, you also, of course, have Ukrainian troops that routinely use cell phones on the front lines. And I would argue that having an extremely high concentration of troops within range of uh, Ukrainian artillery is probably the reason this happened. And equally guilty is building an ammunition holding area next to a barracks. Um, don't get me wrong. When we were in Afghanistan, you had no choice. You had to hold your ammo on the same base that you held your personnel, but you did everything you could to put that ammunition holding area in a place on the base where there would be the least consequences if it were to be detonated. You also, of course, in the US military, have strict regulations about how AHAs are, are constructed. They are meant to prevent fires from spreading. They are meant to prevent and contain uh, even powerful explosions uh, in the event of a general detonation like this. And so all none of these things happened. I can virtually guarantee it. Uh, it requires specialty ammo handlers. It requires, I mean, the U.S. Army has an entire ordnance corps with their own ordnance officers, ordnance troops, who do nothing but manage, move, and maintain uh, ordnance. 
And so if you tell me that the army views this as so technical a job that it's created its own entire branch with MOSs and designated officers, uh, there's almost no way newly mobilized Russian troops have one 20th of the training necessary to manage uh, a complex military ammunition and logistics or simply construct a proper AHA ammo holding area. Aha. Um, and so blaming them is like, it's not wrong. It's just the smoothest brain take you can possibly have. And I say this again, because it's sort of like saying, well, I'm trying to think of a good analogy. Like, like you you got in that car wreck because you drove in a snowstorm. And it's like, well, no shit. But like, why'd you drive in a snowstorm? Why weren't the roads pro like salted and plowed? Why are the, like, what was the actual proximate cause? Was it going too fast? Was it sliding on black ice? Like, yeah, making it something obvious, but not asking the deeper questions that, this reality betrays which is where were the commanders enforcing discipline why were so many troops concentrated in one place uh making it obvious an obvious target and why was ammunition held uh, right next to uh, a large concentration of troops and they point out that this is probably uh the russian ministry of defense uh refusing to address its actual failings um, and the failure of the Russian military apparatus. And again, imagine an army that's already this dysfunctional and then doubling and tripling its size without having, you already don't have an adequate officer corps uh, to run this operation. You definitely don't have the NCOs you need. Uh, and so what you end up with instead is not really an army, but kind of just a group of people who have been forced into a place and may or may not fight for you fight for themselves uh you know it's just it's just sort of preposterous and one of the things that's interesting is that one the dnr head Denis pushilin uh said that some of the officers in this regiment were themselves recently mobilized servicemen meaning that instead they were simply probably individuals with college degrees or higher reading levels uh and they were made officers and this meant that of course you had the blind leading the blind uh, again before i could lead troops um not in combat but before i could lead troops stateside i needed about a year a year and a half to two years of training in addition to the ROTC curriculum that I went through concurrent with my university. And then once I took command of the platoon, I had to spend at least nine or three months uh, training with them as a platoon conducting combat operations. I actually had to plan my own training and then execute it, which was kind of weird. But the point is that you should understand is that you cannot conjure up an officer uh, by simply finding someone who read good um, or do other thing good too you have to build them and you have even a mediocre or poor or expedited officer training you've got it's going to take six months you just don't have a choice and if you this is not something that russia is willing to do they seem to be trying to speed run uh getting troops to the front lines which seemed really necessary when they were actively pulling out of Kherson and they were being pushed back in Kharkiv but those things aren't happening right now so the question then you're left with is why why are russian forces treat still operating as though they have to rush people to the front line with the minimum possible conceivable training um just to have them get killed in bakhmut for no reason um is a is morally bad right killing your citizens for no reason is bad uh obviously invading your neighbor for no reason is bad but it's also bad military policy to run a war like this uh, and again they're trying 
the Russian MOD appears to be trying to dilute delude itself. Uh, which, trust me, as someone who saw the Department of Defense fight the war in Afghanistan, I know what it's like when an institution lies to itself in order to convince itself, It's in order to avoid dealing with the stark reality that it's failing uh, massively in its sole mission. And so now it's trying to basically manufacture uh, meat successes by characterizing small gains like like the seizing of farm fields outside of Solidar as real military successes. Um, and it, it's just right they're, they're claiming they have a new missile carrier um, that they're you know they're acting like it's going to be some big game changer. It's not. We've seen this. It's almost certainly has like one hypersonic missile and they'll throw it at at some Ukrainian power plant and then that'll be the end of it. We'll never hear about it again. It's and anyway, on the Ukrainian side, uh they're announcing that they're going to be launching a counteroffensive throughout Ukraine in the spring of 2023. Uh this is almost certainly not true. Um, that's not to say that they won't launch counteroffensives between now and the spring. They will, uh, but they're not going to put an announcement of it out. Uh, what they're doing is, is just muddying the information space um, or saying things that are so generic that they are unhelpful. Um, you know, you can intend a lot of things. I think, uh, you know, having a major offensive to liberate territory from Crimea to Donbas and uh, deal the final defeat to the Russian Federation. Uh, even the Russians have to know this is this is just sort of bombastic, and this is just meant to further confuse Russian intelligence about when Ukrainian forces actually will launch their offensives and uh, where they actually will do so. Um, again, I think this is probably reflective of just uh, information warfare, not necessarily some sort of deeper deeper revelation of strategy this but this just isn't what you do for an offensive and it's not what ukraine did last time remember they talked for months about the Kherson offensive that never really materialized instead was a Kharkiv offensive anyway guys thanks so much for joining me of course if you want uncensored combat video breakdowns uh with you know the viral combat videos the kind that youtube doesn't want me to show you um those are all on the patreon and you should definitely join the link is in the description you also get access to an exclusive room on the discord thanks so much to my lieutenant tier patrons um and i'm going to be putting the new lieutenant tier patrons in there today i'll see you guys all in the next one